Sit, Coco, sit. Good dog. Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. In this episode we'll be checking in with Macy's. This is the Macy's location at Superstition Springs Center and I wanted to take a look at this one again for a few different reasons. One of them was because this was one of the stores that I looked at when I was covering the new Toys R Us sections that were popping up at Macy's and that was about eight months ago so I wanted to see how that Toys R Us section looked now. Also Macy's recently released their first quarter financial results and it turned out that sales were down 7% from the same quarter last year. Because of those poor first quarter sales results, Macy's has downgraded their outlook for the entire year. And on top of that, Macy's stock has dropped 22% in the first half of this year. All of that financial news made me want to go visit Macy's to see if that is all reflected in one of the stores that are local to me. And I chose this store because this is probably one of my favorite Macy's to wander around. It's never been a busy store, and it's also very much kind of stuck in the 90s still. And we all know that I love places that are still stuck in the past. This particular location opened in 1994 as a Robinson's May, and then around 2006 it converted to a Macy's when Macy's purchased them. I remember when this building was a Robinson's May, and I'm pretty sure that all of this carpet and tile is all original to the Robinson's May. I don't think Macy's changed a whole lot except for hanging some new artwork and things on the walls and some new displays. The thing that's kind of odd about this Macy's location is that it's really big, and when you're on the first floor, it just feels like you're in a 1990s department store, and the second floor mostly feels like that as well. But you'll see when we get to the third floor, things get pretty weird. It kind of feels like the department store that time forgot up there. After spending a few minutes on the first floor though, it's starting to feel like people have just forgotten about this Macy's location in general. I had mentioned earlier that one of the reasons I liked this Macy's is because it never was very busy, but this is much more dead than I expected it to be for a Saturday afternoon, which is when this was filmed. It's looking like this location might be having its last act. Now we're up on the second floor and things really don't look much different from the first floor. It looks relatively clean if not worn out. It also looks like the entire store is on sale. There is sale signs all over the place. At least they look professional though and they're not handwritten like the ones I was seeing at Sears the last time I was there. And here's the Toys R Us section, which is on the second floor, and I don't think that Jeffrey bench was there the last time I was here, so that's kind of nice to see. Although I did notice immediately that this section does not look nearly as well put together as it did when they first opened it. There seems to be just a lot of crap everywhere. Product on the floors, none of the shelves look faced correctly. And it also looks like a lot of the name brand stuff that was here is no longer here. I'm not seeing nearly as much, if any, Legos. They do have some stuff like Peppa Pig, which I'm surprised that's still popular. It's such a weird show. And they do have Barbie over there on the left, but again, the whole display looks trashed. Everything just kind of seems very disorganized. I had mentioned in my last video about these Toys R Us at Macy's things that they didn't really feel like Toys R Us to me, and now this feels even less like Toys R Us to me. You can put as many little cardboard Toys R Us signs on this as you want, but it's not Toys R Us. Just like even though there's a Hot Wheels sign there, these are not Hot Wheels on this display. These are just cheap, generic knockoffs, and I was going to say these are the kind of thing you would find at the grocery store, although... I don't know if it's the same at your grocery stores, but the grocery stores near me seem to have a really large amount of actual Hot Wheels for some reason. These fast lane cars seem like they don't even want to be here, like they're trying to work their way out of the packaging to get out of here. Man, I remember how organized the different sections were at Toys R Us for each of the things like Barbie and Legos and this, this just isn't it. This is awful. With the first and second floors of this place being as dead as they were, I was pretty curious to see what the third floor looked like. The last time I was up on the third floor of this store was probably about a year ago, and at that time it was 
by far the deadest part of this Macy's, and there were also some signs around, like those pardon our dust type signs, so it looked like maybe they were going to be doing some improvements or updating things. But once I got up here, it doesn't look like anything is any different from the last time I was here. It's still the same worn out mint green department store carpet. And to be honest with you, this whole floor for some reason seems much older than the rest of the store. I wonder how long this Yoshi doll has been hanging out in this bed. The third floor consists of things like home goods, furniture, bedding, kitchen stuff, and this seems to be the least shopped part of the store. It really does feel like a completely different store up here from the first and second floor. And there seems to be just a lot of random piles of clearance stuff. They've even got some of the prop books from the furniture department over here for sale. But yeah, there's just random tables of all kinds of junk. I've been to thrift stores that have more organized merchandising than this. I was also kind of surprised to see that there's some old Christmas stuff here still. One of the things that Macy's has been investing in is smaller format stores, and I think seeing stuff like this proves the point that there are some Macy's stores that are just far too big. This whole third floor just feels almost neglected compared to the first two floors. It really is kind of eerie being up on this third floor. It almost feels like you're not supposed to be up here. It looks like somebody enjoyed some Wetzel's pretzels up here in the weird Macy's third floor back rooms area. I wonder how long that bag's been there. Even the red and white tile seems strange. It doesn't seem to match any of the other flooring up on this floor, and it seems a lot older than what is downstairs. And it looks like we've made our way to the furniture gallery. For some reason, the furniture gallery is much darker than the rest of the store. Seems kind of counterintuitive when you're furniture shopping. The furniture gallery is also where they have their mattresses. This whole area just is kind of creepy. It's so neutral and dark and quiet too. Normally when I walk into a mattress section of a furniture store, I'm immediately hounded by salespeople and there's not even any mattress salespeople around up here. You know, I like when things are weird and eerie like this, but I can't imagine this is a really great environment to try and sell furniture in. It is strange how a place can feel very empty, but almost kind of claustrophobic at the same time. I guess if you kind of want to experience the back rooms for yourself, see if your local Macy's has a third floor furniture gallery. It's just weird up here. I think hanging up some Macy's advertising portraits like this is the only thing that they've really done to change this floor. All of the flooring and fixtures up here all look like they've been here since the store opened almost 30 years ago. And look, they still have the please pardon our appearance signs up here. There's also a lot of weird nooks up here where they'll just be a little random display for one thing, like for example the Fiesta Ware right here, but then I don't see any other plates or silverware or anything like that around. At least not anything like that displayed in any sort of organized manner. The rest of the displays just have random boxes and things thrown on them. And here's some more evidence of things just being worn out up here. This wall partition here looks like it's seen better days. I can't believe they leave this like that all stained up and everything. When I was a kid it seemed like everybody thought Macy's was a fancy department store, but this just looks like shit. This might be the sorriest small kitchen appliance section I've ever seen in a department store. These shelves having a little section for each brand, but then only having a couple of things in each section looks really sad. It doesn't seem like this shelving was originally set up to display small kitchen appliances, which makes everything just seem kind of out of place. The third floor also contains a Macy's Backstage, which is another store within a store that they have here. Macy's Backstage is like their version of Ross or TJ Maxx. There is actually a Ross and TJ Maxx attached to this mall, which is why I think this Macy's backstage up on the third floor is so quiet. That, and I'm not even sure if a lot of people know that this is up here. 
but they pretty much carry a lot of the same discount goods that Ross and TJ Maxx carry, but it's just a smaller version of that in here. So the same stuff, but less selection of it. Right now we're coming up on the toy section of Macy's backstage. So this Macy's does have a second toy section, but again, a lot of this stuff is clearance. A lot of it's off-brand stuff, but there was a lot of off-brand stuff down in the Toys R Us section as well. It's also really crammed in here. It's a lot of tripping hazards. I'm sure this stuff has piled up though because I'm sure a lot of people see the Toys R Us section and just assume that's all of the toys in the store and then they don't make it up to the third floor. Wow, it really is a mess up here. It's a good combination, tripping hazards and then sharp metal shelf edges. It is really strange how they've decided to use their sales floor real estate up on the third floor because a lot of the third floor seems like it's empty and sparse. And then you get over to this Macy's backstage section and everything feels very crammed in. It seems like they should be able to consolidate some of the stuff up here and then just kind of expand this Macy's backstage section a little bit more to make it feel not so cramped. I also think that they need to add some more signs throughout the store, pointing out that there is a whole other store up on the third floor. Because right now it's kind of sad looking up here, especially when you consider that the Ross and TJ Maxx at this mall are both very busy. I always enjoy an empty department store, but obviously empty department stores don't stay in business. The news for Macy's hasn't been great over the last couple of months, but I don't think that that means Macy's as a whole is going to go anywhere anytime soon. They have been in the process for the last few years closing unprofitable stores, but I do think stores like this one could possibly be in danger. I just don't see how this huge three floor Macy's can be profitable especially when it's so empty and there's a third floor that just seems kind of neglected. There's a newer and smaller Macy's just 15 minutes away from this one and I don't think that location's going to go anywhere anytime soon. I do think that the days are numbered though for really big Macy's locations like this one. If you've got a really big Macy's near you with a third floor and you want to experience some empty department store weirdness, I'd go do that pretty soon. I know that I've seen some other bigger Macy's in California that also have equally strange third floors. What are your thoughts on Macy's though? Is it a store that you normally shop at? And if you have a Macy's near you, is it a weird one like this one? I'd love to know down in the comments below. This is where we're going to wrap up our look at this Macy's though. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my update video on Macy's. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the Retail Archaeology channel.